Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We're parked outside, we as in me and you, we're parked outside of Ulta. And I wanna go in and do a little bit of spontaneous fragrance shopping. And I hope I won't be disappointed. Every time I go into Ulta, I am hoping they have something new on the shelves for me to sniff. And usually they have the same old same. Occasionally there'll be a surprise there. What I really would like to try, it's not new, but it would be new to me, would be the Billie Eilish fragrance you know the one in the gold bottle with like the bust it looks like a statue with the just from here up I'd love to try that and I don't think that Ulta carries the ruby orchid flanker of flower bomb but if they do have it that would be a nice surprise and I'd like to try that and just want to see what else they have and of course I'm gonna buy some makeup and hair products too so yeah we're gonna go into Ulta in a minute and I'm gonna take you in with me the other thing I wanted to do today is give a test drive to do you see what I did there because we're in the car and we drove here a test drive to a new handbag that I have courtesy of Teddy Blake you may have seen advertisements for Teddy Blake on Instagram or on Facebook or other places, and they're supposed to be luxury Italian handbags. It doesn't say this on their website at all, but it's obvious that the bags are in the style of some of the incredibly expensive Hermes bags, like the Birkin bag and so forth. Anyway, they reached out to me and asked, would I like a bag? And would I like to review one on their channel? And I said, sure, who doesn't love handbags? I certainly have my own collection that I've built up through the years and I'm always looking for some other new bag for some specific function. A bag to go to the mall with, a bag to buy groceries with, a bag to take to the gym, a bag to walk around the city with, a bag to take to a business meeting. Anyway, there are lots of wonderful choices on their website. We'll talk about the bag later, but I did wanna go ahead and show it to you here at the top of the video. I picked out, and it's so big, it's gonna cover my head in the video, but I picked out this beautiful red uh, crocodile embossed, croco embossed bag here. And I like that it's big and it's one of those bags that I would typically call either like a shopper bag because you can put a lot in it if you're going shopping like your stuff and things that you buy but the a bag like this i would mostly take to like a business setting put my laptop in there some documents and so forth because of the structure of the bag so we'll talk about the bag a little bit more when i get back home after shopping at ulta but i wanted to show it to you before we went in because it is keeping me company today let's go see what we can sniff at ulta So the Billie Eilish fragrance was right at the front of the store. I have to say, I do like the bottle. It's gaudy in all the right ways. It's heavy, kind of cool. This is a very sugary, light, fluffy, like berry scent, comforting, cozy. I didn't purchase, but I would consider purchasing in the future. Here's the men's section, which always seems more well-stocked. I was looking for some interesting new male fragrances. Of course, they had the same old same. And then I did try the Black Opium Illicit Green, which I actually liked. It smells a lot like Black Opium, shocker, <laughs> with some hints of a greenness to it. No surprises there, of course. Now look at this. Folks, can, can you pick up your trash? Yikes. Here were these cool new little fragrances. I didn't test them out, but boy, are these bottles super pretty. Have you tried any of these? Leave us a note. Let us know what you think. Then I tried this Escada Cherry in Japan, which smells, not surprisingly, like Japanese cherry blossom from Bath and Body Works. So that was a no. I do love the Tiffany bottles. I have really thought long and hard about purchasing one. The problem for me is longevity. Every time I try one of these in store, it smells really fantastic for all of five seconds. And then, I don't know, it just like disappears. Do you have luck with longevity? The new rose gold one is of interest. The first time I tried it, I wasn't crazy about it. But the second time I did like it. Here is Ulta's pitiful display. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on here. Ulta, please get it together. I've been looking at this alien goddess. It smells very much like summer to me, and I'm considering getting a bottle of it. Sadly, there wasn't much else in the women's section to try. I have sniffed all of these fragrances, 
and just wish Ulta would have some new or more interesting releases to share with the public to entice me in from time to time. I mean, how many times can we sniff the same old fragrances? I want yeah. you to know <laughs> the wind today nearly took me with it. After Ulta, I went to Costco and before I went into Costco, Oh my gosh, I had a battle with the wind and the wind absolutely won. Mother Nature will get you every time. Don't play with her, okay? You cannot, you cannot play with her. Here's a little bit of footage of my hair losing to Mother Nature. It did not want my hair to live its best hair life. So I had to come back and get myself together, do my hair again, fix up my makeup before I came onto this video so I didn't look too crazy for all of you. But Teddy Blake, Go check out their website and see what you think of their bags. If you're the kind of person that enjoys a luxury handbag, but the prices drive you crazy because they surely drive me crazy and I will not purchase super luxurious uh, purses because first of all, I beat up my purses, one. Two, I just think I can spend those thousands of dollars on very many other things. However, you might be a person that is really into luxury handbags and maybe, you know, can't spring for the super high end and you're looking for something similar, check out Teddy Blake. So like I said, I picked out this particular bag because I really like the Croco embossing on it. And I like the size of it. It's a bag that I could certainly use for work because I no longer really carry a briefcase. Not really, I mean, I used to, but I don't anymore. But this is the kind of thing where I can put my laptop and my files and I can even stick my big wallet in here and maybe even a little purse. Like I like to carry a crossbody often because it's easy. You just throw it over your shoulder and you I can go. put my crossbody directly into this with everything else. I don't particularly love this. Maybe some of you folks like to wear your purse like that. I prefer something a little more snug under my shoulder or like I said, across the body or something. But if I'm going to carry something like this, I will just carry it by the handles like that and take the strap off altogether. You know what I mean? So anyway, check out the website. These are really nicely made. The stitching on these is impeccable. The craftsmanship is wonderful. I'm not huge into luxury handbags, but I do know what to look for in terms of stitching and the quality of leather. These are nicely made Italian leather handbags that are handcrafted. So Teddy Blake, check them out. And thank you, Teddy Blake, for sending me over this gorgeous bag. I do have my eye on a couple of other bags. This one here in particular caught my eye. We'll see if it makes it into my collection soon. Do take a look at all the wonderful options on the Teddy Blake website. And if you decide to purchase, use TB Veronica Says 30 for a 30% discount on your already reduced price. That's a discount strictly for you. I get nothing from that. Happy bag shopping. Let's kick off with the fragrances that I purchased from Nobile 1942, which is an Italian niche house. FragranceNet.com was having a sale on these. And so I ran on there and grabbed a bunch that I thought I might be interested in. Of course, I frantically looked at reviews and all of that before, but nonetheless, these are all blind buys. I got six all together. There was a fail and then I would say a couple of meh, mehs, and some wins. So let's talk about that. I'll start off with Sandalo Nobile. I love the bottles. I think they're really cute. I will say, and I'm so naive, such, such a dummy, y'all. I really thought that these were metal, metal uh, plates that were on the bottles and they're not. This is like a sticker of some kind. So I'm not happy about that piece of things, but nonetheless, the bottles are pretty. You'll see that sticker theme in just a minute. And I do like the caps. This is a nice woody, soft sandalwood fragrance with some hints of iris, like a little bit, a little touch of makeup smell, like very, very, very faintly um, in there, but mostly just a really soft, simple sandalwood with some woodiness to it. I really um, like this. I think it is fine. And this is one that I would not be afraid to douse myself in. I would say that I got about medium longevity out of this as well as projection. Okay. This isn't, none of these fragrances with the exception of the fail, <laughs> really are going to fill an entire room. They're more like intimate to a few feet away of the scent bubble. You know, they last moderately. So let's just say that for all of the upcoming Nobiles, except one that I'm going to tell you about. 
Then there is, and I hope I'm pronouncing these right there. It's an Italian house, so I'm using my Spanish speaking-ish skills to try to figure out how to pronounce these. Castelli di Sabia. And these come in bottles that have this kind of cap. I have two that look like this. And this is a very nice fragrance, but it falls into the meh category for me only because the opening is what is really attractive about this. And then it mellows out into just a nice fragrance. So there's nothing wrong with it. If you're interested in this and you wanted to buy it, I would certainly not tell you don't buy it. Is that grammatically correct? I would tell you not to not buy it. I would tell you to go ahead and buy it. It would be a yes. Go this ahead. This is a fragrance that has dates in the opening. And so you get that really sort of, it's not like a rotten fruit smell, but it's an overripe fruit smell that um, almost is like on the verge of turning into like fermenting, right? Turning into like an alcohol kind of compound. So it has that in the beginning along with cardamom and cinnamon. So there's some nice fruitiness and spiciness at the beginning and then it settles down. It still has that, but it's faint. And then you get a lot of musk and vanilla so a very pleasant fragrance but that opening really captured my attention and then didn't stick around and so it was like that first date that's fantastic and you go home dreaming of your future together and then as you continue to date you realize this is just an average person so <laughs> nice average fragrance that I will wear but didn't knock my socks off I'm definitely gonna mess up the next name bear with me Il Centerio Degli Dei 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 here you go. <laughs> this is a fragrance for those of you that really appreciate citrus and green together. I would say it opens up a little bit sharp. If you're not a citrus lover or enjoy really green notes, you, you won't like this. There is some woodiness in the base that I think helps to balance this out and some a little hint of like something sweet and vanilla-like. There's, according to Fragrantica, tonka bean in the base and maybe that is what is giving this the mellowness at the but bottom. Yes, it's mostly green and citrus at the opening and maybe a little bit much for people. This one to me is pleasant, but I would call this also a meh. Nothing wrong with meh fragrances, right? But just wanna be uh, upfront with you all about my feelings about these. Then we have Il Giardino del Delizie. Il Giardino del Delizie. Got it. I hope. I do like this one. This is a surprise for me because when I first tried it, when it arrived, I was like, okay, that's all right, but nothing special. And as I have tried this one more, I think it's falling into the heavy, like maybe creeping into the love category. What I get out of this mostly is this really like buttery suede note. Um, it's like suede with some irisy kinds of florals way in the background and this really soft like cashmere layer over the suede and in between the suede and the florals and it comes across to me delicate yet substantive and sophisticated and one that I would wear if I wanted to feel a little bit elevated for the day there's something really special in this fragrance that's hard to put my hands on yeah, you know what this reminds me of? And maybe it's just a comforting smell, like when my mom would come home from work and she had on a leather coat for the day, but she had put perfume on in the morning. The perfume has really faded off, but there's still like that little hint of perfume on her skin mixed with bubble gum. She liked to chew juicy fruit. She still does. My mom's still alive, bless her heart. But <laughs> juicy fruit. Um, so juicy fruit and a little tiny hint of that floral perfume still lingering and this beautiful like suede kind of note. I said leather coat, but I mean suede. So this is a winner. Then is my favorite from the bunch. And then I'll tell you about the fail. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what the fail is. It's Gastadiva. And this is this beautiful tropical yellow floral with a lang, -lang with osmanthus, with frangipani that I think I'm gonna be rocking a lot this summer. That's what I get most out of this is that like tropical floral thing. And this will probably be in a tropical florals video this summer. I did one last summer and I think I might repeat some of that series, but this is the hit of the group. Then we get to the fail from the Nobile 1942 haul and it is Malia. <laughs> 
I was hoping to really adore this fragrance. I love the bottle. Look how pretty that is. I love that. I love that it's funky. If you've watched me, you know that I have Shamal in the blue bottle that I adore. I was hoping this one would be as bewitching as that one, as interesting and unique. It is interesting. It is unique but unfortunately it is not for me. And I try to wear it. It's not a scrubber or anything like that. And what I mean by that is I put it on and I didn't immediately think, ew, I can't stand this. It wasn't that. I put it on and I kept trying to like settle with it and decide how do we feel about each other? Are we gonna date? Are we gonna be like an item? Or are we just sort of, you know, two ships passing in the night? And it was the latter, you know? Speaking of the dating analogies, <laughs> For those of you that are in the dating scene, you might know what I mean. You come across that really interesting character that's intriguing, but no way does it make sense for you to have a relationship with that person because it's just not going to work out. That's how I feel about this one. I appreciate that people love it. Now, to tell you what it smells like is impossible. <laughs> The reviews on this are fantastic, which is why I felt comfortable blind buying. And I regret it because it wasn't an inexpensive blind buy. It is for sale on Mercari. If you are a Malia lover and are looking for a bottle, what I would say about this that is troublesome to me, it's not listed as a note, but I get like this deep licorice note thing happening, like a peppery licorice that just bothers me. I can't figure it out. Same kind of note that can be really troublesome for me in fragrances. It just doesn't sit right with me. So by no means was I repulsed or repelled by this, but we just couldn't get into a groove with each other. So for that reason, Malia is leaving the collection before it even entered. <laughs> Next, I have two fragrances from Genre Parfums, and I think they're only selling on Etsy right now. And I got interested in looking this house up because of this one. It's called Apples and Aces. And I think I first saw it on Tim Smelly Sweet's Instagram page. He, listen, he has a wonderful page and does some really amazing reels and shots of fragrances. And I fell in love with the bottle. This is another one that I thought was a metal plate because I have no sense, <laughs> okay? It's a sticker. And that's not a big deal. I figured it must be a sticker when I noticed that the price was $50 for a 1.7 ounce, which is not bad at all. But I was a little bit disappointed because something in me really wanted that to be a metal plate, just like with the Nobile fragrances. Anywho, that's neither here nor there. This is really nice. It is masculine leaning. I will say that if you are someone that prefers or unisex or feminine leaning fragrances, this is something that I would wear. However, it would probably be in colder weather and one that I think would smell really nice on my husband. He hasn't had a chance to wear it yet. I did wear this sort of as a test, you know, for an evening. And I want to read you some of the notes because I was attracted to them. Top notes of red apple and pear, which I love. And I do think there is a prominent red apple apple note in here that stays throughout much of the life of the fragrance that gives it a little bit of lightness compared to what you would think with some of the other notes I'm about to read you. So top, red apple pear, rum, cognac, and wine. And then in the heart, patchouli, black pepper, a tobacco accord, and saffron. In the base, amber leather, oud, white musk, and vanilla. It's basically this really deep, ambery um, tobacco kind of fragrance and you do get that red apple and there's something else happening in here almost like that rotten fruit kind of thing like that date thing and even 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 though it's not a note or whatever and maybe it's the wine that's coming across like that but something in the licorice kind of family except it's playing well in here with the other notes and I enjoy this. So this is a winner. Just note that it is more masculine leaning of a then fragrance. The next one surprised me and it is Essence. This has some citrus and berries at the top like bergamot and raspberry. There's jasmine in here. There's rose, there's saffron. Ooh, that's a big old bug. It's that time of year. It's 80 degrees today, as you can see from me having the windows open. Not because we don't have AC, but I love a good breeze right when spring starts. 
I love to open the windows and get a nice fresh breeze going through the house, but with warm weather comes bugs. <laughs> so there was an ominous looking bug out there tapping at the window and I'm glad it's on the other side of the window. Woo! <laughs> Anyhow, this fragrance, like I said, it's citrus and it's berries and there's some florals and it's got amber and sandalwood. Now, the perfumer says that this is supposed to open up in the spirit of Baccarat Rouge 540. I think it has some hints of that, okay? But speaking of bubblegum, this gives me more of a like bubblegum lean, like a berry kind of gum lean than BR540, Baccarat Rouge 540. I think it's fresh. It's a fresh, nice, floral, fruity smell with a little bit of musk in it, and I really like it. One thing I do not care for on these bottles is that the atomizer straw I don't know what you call that component I apologize for my ignorance but it doesn't come all the way down to the bottom the straw part stops right about here so there's going to be that portion of fragrance which is a decent amount that I'm not going to be able to get out unless I unscrew it so it, genre parfums please work on that because you got some good stuff going on here I have two more fragrances to share here and then I have other fragrances on the way because you know we just keep shopping right so this one is crazy Crizia, which I heard about on Joss Jane's channel and she mentioned that she heard about it from Ruby Zion and this fragrance does smell a lot as people claim like obsession from calvin klein the original formulation in fact they are super duper close to the extent that you can't really tell one from the other i think that the original obsession has more sweetness than this but that's the only difference so i do like this kitschy bottle here what i don't like about this and i'm already feeling it is okay there's that doesn't have an atomizer on it, it's a dabber bottle. And so when you pull up the thing, okay, very old school like that, and I don't mind that. What I do mind is that there's this suction that happens and it pulls up a lot of the moisture and it ends up kind of not really spilling, but there's a little bit of fragrance that comes out. So yeah, I guess, I guess that's some spilling on the side. And I just don't like that mess. It's a really powerful smell. It's very like for me, old Hollywood glam kind of a smell. This is one of those kitchen sink fragrances that has 10,486 notes. However, <laughs> what stands out to me the most, I would definitely call this a heavily amber smell with some patchouli, some rose, carnation. There's a civet note in here. So for those of you that don't like fragrances that lean animalic, Sometimes people ask if they're not into fragrances, what do you mean by animalic? Smells like an animal. And I'm talking about like sometimes it can smell a little bit, stay with me, <laughs> a little bit like on the urine end, um, a little bit like musty body parts, if you know what I mean. It can smell a little bit, yeah, just B.O.-ish, okay? Um, and other crazy smells that you might smell on animals. So animalic, but it's a hint of that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you're not accustomed to those 70s and 80s fragrances that had like that raw animal power in them uh yeah maybe don't go for crazy crazia but i i like this it's not a super love but i do the part that i do love is that it reminds me of the original obsession i do have the reformulated obsession which is fine but it's nothing like that original beautiful bottle that looked uh, something like this. It was that squat, almost like boat-like bottle. And friends, the last fragrance is both a fab and a fail. Here's why it's a fab. And so we are talking about Bulgari's Patchouli Tentation. So first of all, I had to look up the word tentation and apparently there's several meanings to it. So would love to hear your thoughts if you happen to know which definition is correct. One is the process of shifting a mechanical thing, like a mechanical instrument or something like that, making tweaks to it to the point where you get it better. 
So that kind of makes sense if you're thinking about Bulgari playing around with patchouli and getting it sort of just right through some trials, which is the idea of that definition of temptation. And then in other definitions, it appears to also be synonymous with temptation, but especially the feeling aspect of temptation to really feel something. So feeling the patchouli, I don't know. Listen, I absolutely adore, adore this shape from Bulgari, this bottle shape. I have tuberose, mystique, and I have jasmine noir in this bottle and just adore both of those. So this is a win in that the fragrance is phenomenal. I sprayed it and immediately fell in love and thought, ooh, this is awesome. But my second thought was, I have smelled this somewhere. And if you're like me, it could be a fragrance that you've worn a thousand times, but you just can't put your finger on it. So I sniffed and sniffed and sniffed, and then all of a sudden it dawned on me, and that's that it smells very similar. Like these could be, what are the twins that aren't identical? Fraternal twins? <laughs> they could be fraternal twins. Narciso the White Cube. Now, this is more heavy on the floral and creamier around the edges. This one is slightly lighter in texture and leans a little bit more on the iris side. You get patchouli and iris and florals in here, but in the air, they smell very similar to each other, okay? Very similar. So I no longer need a backup of Narciso because I have this, and the chances of me running out of both of these anytime soon are gonna be slim. But this is an absolute winner. I would say if you're scared of Narciso, the white cube, and want it to be just toned down a little bit like the musk in it or the the heaviness of it the denseness of it is just too much you want it lightened up just a bit you might be interested in patchouli temptation from ogari so that is my video today we hung out together on the way to ulta we shopped around ulta and we talked about some fabs and fails and i shared my new purse from teddy blake with you would love to hear your thoughts on this video or the fragrances or teddy blake thanks so much for joining me and i will see you in the next video take care friends